Hey, there we go. What's going on, Brian? <laughs> Thank you, Matt, for taking some time here and joining us in Vancouver, Canada. Yeah, man. How's the weather? You know, pretty good. We had a snowstorm, of, I guess, about a week back, and it was kind of a clusterfuck. Vancouver can't drive worth shit. It's like as soon as uh, any mention of snow or like even just a skim, a, just a skiff of snow and like you know, people lose their minds, you can, if you listen hard enough, you can hear people's IQs dropping. So, Oh, Matt, I live in Nashville, and when well, you guys know, the, the world ends. Yeah. You know? If, if there's a flake this big, the, the it just shuts down completely. I got a I got a buddy that lives there, uh, Joey Moy. Yeah, I'm okay. I've known him for years from uh, back in the day when he's doing all the Nickelback stuff. Awesome. And he's he's down there, fucking absolutely. He says he loves it down there, like music uh, city straight up, right? Like, it's dude, it's such a great town. It's it's so cool, man. And there's and there's such like a like a family of musicians here. Yeah, it's amazing. It's yeah. absolutely amazing. Yeah. And, and you're by the way, I got a brother named Todd. No, I do. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> that's sure. crazy because I don't, I mean, I'm 50 and I, I probably have met under 10 Todds in my life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But there's His just not Todd. many Todds anymore, you know? He taught me my first five chords on the guitar. Oh, so upside yeah, old, down. older brother then. He's upside a down. Oh, he's, a, he's a lefty? Yeah. And that's so. It. My dad had a right-handed guitar, and he just flipped the thing over, and he learned how to play it that way. So he taught me my first five chords, and I'll tell you what, that first year was pretty weird. And then one day, I went like this, and I went, oh, this makes a lot of You're sense. Like, oh, now I get it. Fuck. Dude, you told me it's backward. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like your world you know, was it's just... cool on a solo, because, you know, you can... Yeah, totally, right? Over. It's like sw yeah. switch hitting in baseball. We got yeah, exactly. That'll be all right exactly uh, ryan tell us about your world right now man it must be just freaking wild hey like right now like one of the singers in the new mick mars album yeah you're on a couple tracks i mean it's that's amazing exploding right now dude it's huge it's um yeah super psyched because today was the third single you know when the video actually got released um i believe it went live to streaming a few days ago but um the video actually came out at a little after 1 p.m. Nashville time, anyway. Um, unbelievable, man. But, you know, I've said it to people before, and it's funny when you get to, you know, and I was lucky with this, but when you get to work on a project where you actually really like the music, and more importantly, you really like the people that are a part of it. Yeah. And that adds... It's fun. I sound like a broken record, but the group of people that surround this thing, uh, Mick is a given. Mick's an awesome, awesome dude, man. I mean, he's just easygoing. He's so humble. Um, mm -hmm. He's just he's just a great guy to be around, you know. So, and then who brought me into this was Paul Taylor, um, who's been a dear friend for uh, over fifteen years. Ever since I've lived in Nashville, um, uh, we've we've gotten pretty close, and we've done a lot of things together. But um, yeah, uh, so you got Jacob Button, who's just amazing as well, um, amazing vocalist. And he does a bunch of stuff. I mean, he plays a bunch of instruments, and everything he does, he's good at. Like Paul, uh, Ray, guys, say hey, just like really everything you touch is gold. Yeah. Like really. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, I play a bunch of stuff, but I don't think it's good as any of those guys. But uh, yeah, but you got Ray, who's here from Corn, Ray, Ray Corn's drummers. Yeah, part of that project. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Wow. He's huge. Gosh, and then Chris Collier, who is mixed on a ton of different stuff. He's also an awesome musician, and he he plays bass on it, and then he mixed it as well. And then of course is Michael Wagner. You know. Yeah. I can't say enough about Michael Wagner. He is a wonderful guy, uh, you know, which is cool because he did kind of the first record with Mick mm -hmm. back when. And and then really this, I, I'm pretty sure, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure uh, Mick's album was kind of the last album he did before he retired. Oh, no. So, so wow. how funny is that going full circle, you know? Holy no shit, hey, big time. And yeah. like, and, and like, as you're working with these guys, not, not to say you're a slouch or anything, but like when you're working with these fucking like massive juggernauts, 
is it yeah. hard to like step aside kind of and like watch and and actually pull things from them or are you just is it such a whirlwind that you're like I'm, not, I'm just hanging on fucking hopefully i'm i'm doing what they what they're what they want but no it's a great question and and it's so funny um they're all so warm you mm. know I, I, like I know I, I I repeat myself, but they're great humans, every single one of them, really. And they're so easy to talk to, so easy to deal with. And and like it's funny, I, I joke about it, but I've cut vocals a lot of places, right? And then obviously I'm in my own studio here. Um and yeah, so I don't look at studio, man. That is well, that your first studio? It is. This is sound mission recording yeah. and um so you can't see it on the other side. There's actually an area with a light stage and oh no way. Oh wow. That's done. But um yeah, but you know, with with Paul, we've done so much together. We've you know played on stage together. He's always been a super help. Um, when I've asked him to come up and play tunes with me at benefit shows and just different things. And mm -hmm. and then we've done some writing together and um I've tracked a, a fair amount of vocals for him over the years and he always gets the best vocal takes of me out of anybody I've ever worked with. And I don't, I don't know if that's just because we are, um, we're tight enough to be really direct. Like, you know, I have one feeling I think left. I think, I think maybe one, maybe it's a half a feeling. So it's kind of hard to like, I, I appreciate somebody that's straightforward. They're like, that take suck, dude, do it again. <laughs> Let's sure. get something better, man. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, cool. come on, right on. Brian, you, got better. Better. you got better in you, buddy. Let's go like yeah yeah like just tell me tell me what i can do better let's let's do it you know so i don't i don't get married to anything and I, i'm not oversensitive and yeah. you can you can shoot straight with me and and it just it gels with paul it's really easy to work with him and um what would you yeah, say is so, your, your your vocal styles like if you're if somebody were to say like you know what are you like and like what do you who who do you like and like who are those people that make you who you are today? Cause like when I heard the song and if you, yeah, it, you know, it, you know, close your eyes and it's, it's very Corey Taylor. It's very story. Really? Power. It's yeah, I think oh. so. Wow. Uh, well, I know, take that as a compliment. Oh, totally. Man. Corey Taylor is a fucking bad boy, dude. You should be taking it that as a compliment. Really yeah. Like killer, killer. So like, how would you say, what would you describe your sound as? Man, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, I think I've always had, you know, from a young age, I've always had a a, a fair amount of rasp, mm. you know, and there's been times on projects, especially studio projects where um, I've cleaned that up a little bit and I, you know, I go at it a little softer and I, I, I try to, you know, get prettier, if you will. You know, yeah, well, it's, it's, it strikes me like you can do that. Like you can fucking get yeah. down and dirty and mean, a little sleazy. But uh, if you need to go the other way, you're you're capable in that direction as well. Absolutely. Um, and you kind of have to be, you know, you can't be a one trick pony all the time. But I naturally, it's just kind of there, mm -hmm. which, you know, is good sometimes. And sometimes you got to rope it in a little bit. Um Boy, when I think about influences, there's so many great singers out there. I mean, I where do I begin? You know, I mean, <laughs> totally, totally from right. all sorts of genres. I mean, there's just some amazing singers. Uh, I tell you what, like everybody from, gosh, I could start early and say early influences were like everything from Boston to Eagles uh, to you know the sultry guys you know what i mean even like um the cockers and the you know what i mean and different sure. people like yeah man just there's been great vocalists over the years and then if you jump into the rock stuff uh you look at david from uh, uh disturbed and you look at like oh my gosh i mean there's so many great vocalists out there it's frightening yeah, i know it's so, uh, so great yeah i mean we're spoiled right we lived in a great era foreigner i mean he's foreigner, great he's, call man he's so amazing right but, so like, is, it, I mean, is this the music that your parents are playing like in the gamboa house as a kid as you're growing <laughs> up is it, is it foreigner is it boston is it art is it all so that or I'm, I'm, I'm relatively old right i'm 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 uh 
I'm over 50. So I'll, no, I'll put it you're seriously over 50. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever so, you're doing, buddy, keep it up, man. I would. Hey, thank you. Uh, you know what it is? Um, Rock. all my kids. My yeah. kids keep me young. They make yeah. me chase them everywhere. It's, so. it's music and kids, man, keeps you young. That's right. That's right. You know, it's a state of mind too, man. I don't yeah. feel. I don't feel my age. I feel nineteen. You know, like yeah, I don't feel my age either. Isn't that weird? Time goes by and you're like, what? Dude, I've, I've talked to like 65, 70 year old dudes that are like, yeah, man, I still feel 20, 25. Like in my mind, I'm there, but like my body is 65, 60, you know, like that's rough. This is, this is true story. I've met some guys and they, <laughs> you know, I know we should all be concerned about our health and we should be proactive, right? So I don't, yeah. nobody get mad at me for this statement but i've seen these guys and they're drinking and smoking they're like 85 years old and they're still out there pouring concrete in the sun their skin's tanned as can be and whatever but they're healthy as an ox and i'm just like is it genetics is it just you know how you think about it do you just like you don't believe you're old or you believe you're invincible and that works for you you know so i kind of i think what I, it is, to like I, that. I talk to a lot of like uh, uh fitness people and stuff on this podcast as well and and, and the majority of them are like as soon as you stop being active it, it's right. when you stop moving around and like that's when your body's like fucking got you <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, dude, it's a good thing I never had a cubicle job or an office job because I, I'm way too ADHD for that, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I've got to be moving. I've got to be doing things, you know, like with my hands, I got to be creating things or something. I just can't, I don't know how people do it. And, and, uh, you know, hats off to them because, you know, if I'm, if I'm staring at a computer screen too long or something, you know, in a, in a, smaller room it's like i gotta go like yeah. I, I gotta something out yeah i think most crazy. of us are, are like that we just don't you know we don't have the luxury so you've been like kind of have you been blinders like here's what i'm gonna do like you've been down this path since like your teens or what man you know what's funny i so i wouldn't say it was good um but i, I literally my parents have pictures of me and uh, playing drums or <laughs> we would make little drum sets when I was three years old. And I, and by uh, the end of fifth grade, I'll never forget that. The end of fifth grade, uh, we had kind of modified my dad's drum set. He was a drummer in the sixties and um, we'd modified his drum set and I played a talent show and I did a Hawaii Five-O, which, you know, it's got all those big fills. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, you know, there's like 16 yeah. seconds on the syncopated the beats Friday. off the top there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was, so my dad brought his drum set into my elementary, right? And it was every day, assemble everybody into the gym area or whatever. Awesome. And he brought some big speakers and I played that song like pretty much note for note you know That's so right. fifth, what am i fifth grade so like i don't know it's like five six maybe at that point yeah so i i, I knew i always i mean music i mean i would just listen to things i'm a real visual guy and music in general has always just um painted a picture for me yeah, instantly man. yeah man, i hear it driven my life since like you know little kid you know Oh man, it's been my savior, really. I mean, I don't, I don't, you know, it kept me out of a lot of trouble at times. Not saying I didn't get in some trouble, you know, right. early on. It like, kept you out of some trouble. Some, but you know, but nothing, yeah. nothing bad. And and it really um because it was so important to me to figure out how to make it and um, you know, how to I knew it's funny. I knew early on I wanted to write and compose and I wanted to play everything. You know, I just, I'm so fascinated by everything. You know, like I play keys and I played keys in bands, but I would never call myself a pianist. You know, I have dear friends that are amazing keyboard piano players, right? They can do their, all the ragtime stuff and they can just, their hands just float. It looks effortless to them. Mm -hmm. and i fake it really really well so yeah. you know i can part play i can i can learn a song you know practice it rehearse it, and then play the part yeah you know if you would ask me to ad lib and just start going off on a scale on that thing no way 
you know, right. on a guitar, yes, but not on a keyboard. But I'm still working on it, and I work on it all the time. Um, but I'm just fascinated by instruments, and I'm fascinated by the process of getting that thing in your head, mm -hmm. and then trying to figure out how to get how it, to bring it together. You know, wow. to, to in the end result have you know what you were hoping for and um a listenable kind of archival piece that you can put a stamp on and see yeah there it is you know so that it's always fascinated me yeah and and where does uh kiss play into all of this like who are the some of the first bands to really grab a hold of you i guess because so many people like our ages musicians our ages man they're like dude kiss it was kiss well, like okay you know and yeah i mean i so of course i mean you know all the kiss songs and they're on i gravitated i'm gonna be real honest i gravitated more towards so i love night ranger yeah uh um, i love sammy hagar yeah. and then i would go so far as to lean in into i don't know man remember you know oingo boingo and stuff oh, yeah. later you know, because, you know, Danny and the, it was just so magical, like what they were doing with people on stage um, and then the recordings. But yeah, and I didn't set out to be, but I would say kind of a heyday for me, or at least in one of my first bands that, that really kind of had, you know, had some things going and was making some ground. Um, you know, people now would call the glam era. And we didn't just like, hey, we just want to be glam. We just kind of wrote that way and kind of dressed that way and gravitated towards it. And, you know, um, so, yeah, if you can imagine that, you know, hair down to here and, sure. and, and, so tits like, and all the gaudy crap. And, you know, yeah. and, and for those years, like, where, where were you living at that time? So. I grew up mostly from a young age. I was actually born on an island in the Pacific, but I I um, moved to the Denver, Colorado area, northwest Denver area, um, Arvada, like Westminster area, um, pretty young. So from about four, four and a half, five on, I was there till, you know, well into the 20s. Um, and that was kind of home base for me so and so, yeah, so that, who were who were some of the bands like you know hometown guys that uh that actually made it like who would we know <laughs> well <laughs> there wasn't a lot of people coming out of there at the time i was there sure. uh, but i'm gonna say this you know to any you know any of the colorado people that might watch this at some point you know that was an amazing era and the more i look back on it it was really special you know we didn't have um label hub offices in in the city there um you know there wasn't really um music industry encampments anywhere in that so that didn't come till later and i think there's a some now but it's it was never la and it was never new york and um it just those businesses weren't set up there they didn't have satellite offices there um yeah, fair. But the talent that was there, and I would definitely say from probably between 85 and 95 was unbelievable. But fast forward later on down the line, and you see a lot of, well, Big Head Todd and the Monsters, you know, we okay. played with probably at least two times that I know of. Um, and you know we kind of all started doing the same thing it, it you know it started when you were young and then you're playing college things and you're um you're playing all the club stuff and then you're going out regionally and you're trying to spread some wings and so but big ed todd i i think um at least being you know i don't think they were signed out of there obviously but they were from there uh, I know Driving and Crying recorded with Jeff Workman there, you know, obviously Winger Kip, you know. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Or, uh, yeah, so him and his Driving family. Driving and Crying, man, they had a really good album. That one, uh, it was a, what was it called? Not. Uh... Um, it had uh, To Build a Fire on it. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I can picture the album, but. I know, I yeah, know. They, they, I know. They had some really good songs, man. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jeff Workman, um, who's no longer with us for quite some time now. Yeah. He produced them, uh, there, I believe at Avalanche studios. Um, and, uh, so yeah, we had some really good studios and we had, um, some great people come out, you know, like I was saying, fast forward, you get one Republic 303, the fray. Mm. So, you know, those bands, um, we're coming out of there. I know there's more I'm forgetting and I'm sorry, but yeah, I was lucky, man. We, um, there was a, there was a family of musicians when I grew up there that were excellent and many of which I still talk to and man, they, they worked their tails off. Great musicianship, tight bands. Amazing. And it's, it's almost sad that more labels didn't take notice of what was happening in that town. Really? Mm -hmm. Uh, they should have. Um, so, and, and what a weird time too! Like to grow up into the like into the mid '80s, into the '90s, and like the <laughs> advent of the internet, and just like you know, holy fuck, yeah. Lars was right. Lars was right about Napster. <laughs> Yet we I, jumped all I, over the guy. Like you know, it was insane, I, right? You know, it's funny. I, I I think many people have talked about this. So they're probably sick of hearing it. Um, it took me a while to warm up to grunge, you know, because I feel like it, it kind of killed my career. Yeah, you know? yeah, fair enough. I remember at least in Denver, it was March of 94. And um, we had just a year prior been on the show Star Search. And we, we ended up being semifinalists on the show Star Search, the band that I was with, Third Mist. And um and, and we were doing well. We were picking up some speed, right? And yeah. March 94, the airwaves. So Ozzy had just released a record. I forget. Probably a few months or something close to that. I'd, I'd have to look it up. But Probably like Osmosis or something like that. Oh, my gosh. You've got, here's the airwaves, right? Steelheart, Slaughter, Winger, you know, uh, Tesla's on. Sure. Uh, Kid Row and, and like Motley Crue and. Good row and yeah, yeah. So all these and and I don't. What's funny is so many of these guys are, are have become friends. You know, many of them live in Nashville or members of those bands, and it's they're part of this family out here. Um, mm -hmm. But it was like on that day, and I don't remember the day, but I remember the airwaves just making a hard turn, man. And it was like it was like okay, we've been going this way for a while, and then stop, pull the brakes. Everybody's out of rotation, and now yeah. it's just Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, Nirvana, all that. You know what I mean? Dude, and, yeah, it was like the advent of uh, you know when they started going around with Lollapalooza, and suddenly like, oh, yes! there's, there's a cultural shift. Like it's a phenomenally, it's changing the landscape of music, like almost overnight. At least in Denver, the only people or the only person or artist I remember standing from kind of that rock era, hair rock area, and. I wouldn't call them hair metal, but, are, but you know, from that kind of thing from the rotation was Ozzy. Right. And they kept playing him, but everybody else, uh, yeah, it was awful. You know, it was, it was awful. It just mass <laughs> exodus. Yeah, man. I uh, remember that. Obviously not in the context of being in a band, but I do remember it in the context of being a radio DJ yeah 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 yeah, yeah and, and was and, it the same in canada oh fuck yeah dude like, yeah totally it was overnight <laughs> yeah they're like okay get the get the hair guys out of hey, here eh? they're gone <laughs> you the next guys let's go <laughs> straight up man it was like overnight uh, you know it, that would have been I, now wait a minute did you guys kick off rush too or were you cooler with that <laughs> yeah no rush we kept <laughs> they're, like, they're, progr we can't. They're, they're progressive enough they're fine <laughs> they're they're our canadian rock band we can't take them yeah, don't, don't 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 touch rush That'll be we'll fun. lose our sponsors yeah. <laughs> Big time. and what was what was the first concert you went to how old were you oh man okay this is gonna crack you up but i'm I, you know what i got only thing uh, good things to say so my first real concert rock concert if you want to call it that right yeah got a pretty big um venue my parents took me i think i was only about man i had to have been under 
uh, seven, eight. I remember I'm, I was little. I remember that. I'm definitely young elementary school. Yeah. And we went, my family went, or at least a lot of my family went with our neighbors, I think. And they took me to Neil Diamond. No way. Wow. You know, I'm gonna, <laughs> dude, it was awesome. Yeah. And and an art yeah of course that would be like a mind blower and and like it and and he's a, a an artist that you guys listen to in the house so you knew his music of course and and you know I, I mean I I appreciate it much more as an adult now what he did right back yeah. then it was like mom turn it off you know sure but that guy oh my gosh I remember the lights and the production and the sound. And the way he delivered the show and the band behind him, phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, phenomenal. And it made me want to be a rock star. I was just like, are you kidding? Like, really? How awesome is that? You know, and then, and Bro, really more players. than just that. I didn't care so much about if I were the guy on the stage, but it was more like, listen to this massive room singing all those songs, you know? And like how, and they were moved by it. You know, you get the, you got the women over there like crying. Yeah. So we turn like this on. And then when he turns on, uh, when, he, when he sang, uh, what was it? Turn on your heart light or something for me, T. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People weeping. I mean, come on. Like he's hitting their emotions so hard. It's like, that's amazing. If you can create something that makes people feel that deep, what's cooler than that, man? I mean, that's just. Right, oh, and yeah. his story is such a, a cool story too, because he originally had just been like writing a bunch of songs for people, and and he was like, yeah. like they're just not pulling it off the way that I want it to be pulled. Like they're not singing it the way it's supposed to be sung. Screw yeah. it, I'll just do it myself. Yeah, yeah. Like originally, he wasn't gonna be the singer. He was just gonna be writing songs for people, and and that's that. And he was in his mind, I'm, I'm gonna be happy with that. But then when he heard people sing it, he's like, nope, this is not right. Well, and he had such a, um, you know, there's many singers out there. <laughs> I'm probably one of them. There's many singers out there that maybe aren't technically perfect. They don't have the biggest range on the planet or anything else. The, but the thing about him and, and several others, um, yeah, Ozzy included, right? They're believable. When they sing, you believe them. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you're not going to pull off some amazing Celine run, you know, or hit, you know, five octaves in a song or, but, and that's wonderful, not knocking talented singers, don't get me wrong one bit. Yeah. But at the end of the day, when people sing a song, I, I, I really do believe what stands out to them more than anything is a listening and 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 like having an appeal to that vocalist you know which that's always going to be different what people's tastes are but something about it connects with them and then whatever they're singing feels correct and it and it's believable you know when we have when i have people in the studio and i have singers especially new singers or people that are um just kind of learning how to record in a studio you know they're they're kind of they're starting out it's like when you you wrote the song right read your lyrics take it line by line and think about it like you, it obviously meant something to you when you put it down maybe it didn't maybe you're just trying to make things rhyme i don't know but here it is here's what you have and here's this story and now get lost in it you know take everything else out of your mind and how are you going to relay that to someone like how are you going to you know here's this story but how are you going to make someone else believe in that story so you've got to you've got to look at it in a different way and you've got to throw yourself or plunge yourself into it in an emotional way and then as real as you can deliver it if that makes sense easier said you know that. of course Right, of course. Like it, it it's like the 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 biggest trick in the in the game, right? Like just be yourself and just deliver the like like you would. It's like holy fuck, that's make it sound pretty easy, but uh, holy man, I've been in studio where it's been frustration. Like, you know, holy shit, this guy can't get it or this player can't get it. Like, and it's frustrating. You, 
You know what I do when that happens and that does happen. Call it. Yeah. You yeah. know, maybe in two hours they might be in a better mood, but you can't tie up a studio and you can't tie up people's time. If you can help it, yeah. or maybe, you know, you got a lunch coming up or you can take a break and a breather or something like that. But but if it's going on for a long time and you feel like you're just beating a dead horse and you know what I mean, call it. Go home, get some rest. You know, think about this a little bit more and kind of just, you know, get in the right mindset. Let's go back and then hit it again. Right. D you know, don't force something. I think, I think it, I don't think you have to be a musician or some savvy listener to identify when someone wasn't in it. No. You know, in no. a performance. No. I, 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 I think you may not even know what's going on. So, sorry people may not even understand but they just it's kind of like when timing is off from a drummer they just know something's wrong we all have an internal clock we all have kind of an internal uh tone appreciation you know we can we we can identify when something's off and and non-musicians okay they may not know what that is they just know it's off right and the same thing is true about the believability of a singer 100 percent, right like how many times did Neil Diamond have to love on the rocks? You know, no way. Let me try that again. <laughs> to, to to be be like, you know what I mean? mean? Like getting into those moments, man, you got to fucking make it believable for, for like ever. It's oh, on, yeah. it's on an LP. It is in like, it's in the void. It's in the presence. Like people are going to hear that album forever. Well, listen to the Dolly songs and Kenny Rogers songs, the, uh, man, like, who was I listening to the other day? Like, Pablo Cruz and Steely Dan. And I think, I'm listening and I'm listening to those singers. And I'm just like, man, you, you, you people were in it. Like, oh, you're in it. Steely Dan. You know, Moody Blues. One of my faves, man. Love that band. Robert Plant. Was right. Always in it. Yeah. You know, I mean, but then I can go forward. And, and when I listen to people like Hip, uh, Mark Slaughter, I mean, these guys, they felt it when they sang. You know, they, they, yeah. and that's it, man. And they're, and they're not, they're just, they're singing. Yeah. And they're and the same, I think you said a lot of that, a lot of those guys, like, you know, um, Jeff Keith at Tesla and like, you know, Tom oh, yeah. Tom Kiefer from Cinderella, like Tom still, to, still to this day is like just a monster. He is, he is super nice guy too. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Where uh, would you there's so many. I know. I don't know we, could, we, we, we could wax about this forever, right? Like, where where would you put working with Mick Mars, like in the realm of like career highlights? Oh is, there some, is there something bigger than that? Like, no. I rough. can answer that real quick. No, and and it's and it all goes to say what uh, you know. It goes back to what I was saying earlier. Uh, first time I met Mick, which one? You know, it's Mick Moore. I mean, you I know, know like, you, holy crap. I grew up listening to that soundtrack and listening to those guitar riffs and trying to play them and, you know, from very young. And uh, I, I mean, and it's overwhelming. And then you get in front of him and you meet him, right? And <laughs> he's, he's just so nice and he's down to earth and he's humble and he just, man, you know, he's he's lovely to be around you know and uh that's all awesome. yeah, like from, from straight up like a guy that i don't know about you but i had crew posters on the wall man crew rat and all those guys right yeah 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 i mean that is absolutely the highlight and all the guys like i said that are associated with this project they're they're all like that yeah. you know they're, they're all and uh you know i mean they're amazing and and since I've lived in Nashville, it's I've been so fortunate to have some friends, and, and it's it's weird. Uh, there's so many times I played on stage with people that I completely looked up to, you mm -hmm. know. Still do though, still do, you know, because they're exceptional at what they do. And then when they turn out to be good people too, oh, that's yes. thank God. But yeah, Mick is, you know, and and it's. I consider myself just completely lucky, fortunate, humbled, mm -hmm. completely grateful. 
Um, and I owe that to Paul, uh, you know, for that. Um, he was um, working with Mick on a song um, and he was, you know, kind of feeling out some things and they had talked about it. Mick had said early on um, that he's always thought it was really cool albums like the Beatles and where they have multiple singers and the Eagles. And because sure. you're not limited on a record, you know, you can, you can walk in a, in a, in several paths, you know, you may have a signature that ties it together, which of course, I mean, his guitar sound will always do that because it's so unique sure. uh, and his playing style. But um, when you have different singers, the sky's the limit, you know, and you, and whatever he's feeling, he can find somebody that to deliver that and how awesome is that you know like um but you know uh paul was working on it like i said we've been friends for a long time and i think paul had kind of remembered a song we did a long time ago where it, it had this chorus and it, it it had a lot of like anxiety to it, a lot of torment you know a lot of anguish you know mm -hmm. and um and that's kind of what they were looking for. So he was, I was just going to demo it out. I was just going to, so there's a, you know, at that point in time, let's put a vocal on it and, and just make sure everything else is going to work or if we need to change, you know, how mm -hmm. it goes. And yeah, so I demoed it. And that was going to be cool enough, right? Hey, Mick sure. might get to hear my voice on this song. How cool is that? You know, totally right. yeah, that's right. like, oh, that was bucket list right there, you know? Um, and then when it came a little later that it's on, let's go. He, he, he wanted that and he wanted me to sing on it. That was, it was mind blowing. And it was really, wow. Especially, you know, Jacob was already, Jacob Button was already singing the songs. And I don't know how familiar you are with Jacob, but Jacob, uh, Lynam and Adler and all of Jacob's projects. And he's a phenomenal singer. He's a monster singer. He's so good. I mean, he's, and Jacob could do whatever he wanted to do. Like he, he's versatile. He, he's he's a monster, really, instrumentally and vocally. Um, I'm a fan. I love his work. I love his voice. And so I'm like, what? <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> really? <laughs> you know? So that's how I felt. I'm like, okay, um, thank you. I don't, you know, what do you say to that? I'm, no, um, I don't want to do that record. Yeah. Are you kidding? Which is what you, you say to it. And so, like, you know, we've heard those stories about, like, bands taking, like, months and months to work on one song and shit. Like, it, it wasn't like that for this Mick Mars record, I don't think, or at least I've read. Like, he's done it over, like, a long period of time, but he hasn't been working on it the whole time. Right, 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 right. And, uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to speak for Mick ever. Um, I would say this, I, I, at least from what I've heard him say and, 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 you know, and things he said in other interviews and everything, which is uh, what he said to me, you know, he had music in his head. He's always had music in his head. Right. But I mean, uh, he was professional and he was part of a group and he did what he needed in that group. Um, and so he really didn't go outside of it um, respectfully and, you know, but, but it, you know, he had that desire, you know, because there's a lot in there. He's like, he's a complex guy, man. He's got so many great ideas, so many great ideas. It's like you could go in a hundred directions because he knows no limits with his guitar sounds and, and things he comes up with. You know, Paul said it best. Paul said, you know, you listen to some of the stuff he comes up with and you're like, is that all guitar? Like, how did you do that? You know, that really, like he just incredibly creative that way and so, That's so yeah it, it, you know it i think he started he started you know laying some things down and i obviously put out teasers with john crab who's also amazing amazing yep. guy and amazing vocalist um and so uh yeah but i think he finally i don't know i i think it uh you know it finally became clear to him in exactly the direction and then um and and then started working towards what he was hearing in his head you know and uh i wasn't early on like the rest of the guys right they were earlier than me i kind of came in later um 
Yeah, but so, you're there, buddy. But you're there, though, buddy. Yeah. I, you know, and I'm I'm so thank that they're all fantastic, you know, for uh, and Mick and Paul especially for even having me on this, you know. Yeah, and, yeah right. Extremely appreciative. Absolutely. Yeah. That's pretty rad. All right, Brian, oh, let's yeah. get outside of, and, and dude, like, I'm, I'm fucking way past what I thought. I'd be like, yeah, 15, 20 minutes. We're at like 40. Oh, I'll, I'll steal you for a little bit more if that's cool. Sure. <laughs> so let's get outside of music. And, and you can stuff. edit stuff. I don't Oh, care. sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it'll be like a five minute podcast. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what are you, what are you watching lately? Like, what are you, what, what are the shows you're binge watching? Oh, man. Good, great questions. I'm a history buff, right? Okay. I love the Curse of Oak Island. Yes. Uh, I I you know, I watch a lot of things about uh, monuments and places, geographical places in the world. Man, I'm a visual guy. Have so you I love to that uh, all that stuff that uh, I can't remember what the program is, but it's a guy named John Hancock. John Hancock. Wait, what, what, what's what's the show? Hancock? It's like a uh, it's like the uh, just different sites of like uh in, in like egypt and different places in... are you are you talking about josh gates no not josh gates the guy's last name is hancock uh, oh, I, okay. I, I knew that only because of my not last name but it's not john but he was he was he was one of the guests on uh, rogan like about six seven eight years back something like that but really? uh, it, it's all about like old burial sites and like a, an ancient world and like you know, maybe, oh, I maybe Atlantis is real because of look at all these different features and, you know, different landmarks and stuff. And it's fucking mind blowing, man. Mind okay, blowing. I need to look, I need to look that up because it's that's a, right up my alley. Some, something Hancock. Let me see if I can. Uh, where's my phone? Uh, I love that kind of stuff, dude. I could do that. I could I could binge watch. Yeah, same. I, you know, because, you know, I'm not an archaeologist. I'm never going to get invited on one of these sites. But boy, would I love to be there. But what, how, you know? yeah, right? how cool would it be the, to be there, man? Oh, man, the first guy to like, you know, dust stuff off something that's been sitting in the ground for like 5,000 years. Yeah, count me in. All about it. Graham. Graham Hancock. Graham Hancock. It sounds familiar, but I can't place it. But I'm gonna look it up, man. Look yeah, it man, up. look it up. Here, here's what he here's what he looks like. Oh wait, that he looks familiar. Why Does it, it say the name of the show? Why is it venerating a, a pre-Christian, non-Christian relic that belongs to Old Testament times? So I began to do my own investigation, and my own investigation included a lot of time spent with the indigenous ethiopian jews uh, this is something again that's not widely known dude wow. like, binging it for, like literally for hours man like i i'm gonna look it's into that so intriguing hmm. Graham I Hancock. yeah do that how, how about all the superhero movies and shit that are made are you a fan like were you a comic kid as a you know growing up so okay confession <laughs> i was not a gamer Okay, no I, shit. I, not a gamer. I, wow. I was not a gamer. I was not uh, a comic book guy. And I'll tell you why. So my dad and I, I was, yeah, I was, I was kind of a loner for a long time. I I was so into, we'd make our own little recording studios, mm -hmm. um, you know, Radio Shack parts. And, and I would lock myself just away for days sometimes at a time playing guitar and stuff and uh, what i found was in the early days even with uh what was it pong and atari this just bored me i i just couldn't like i i would go to the arcade with friends and stuff but if if i heard an instrument around or somebody you know sometimes i'd bring a guitar with me i mean it was that crazy you know like i just yeah and so like I never really went down that path. Now I did have a first edition. I hope I still have it somewhere because a friend of mine told me I should get it. It was like this first edition spawn, one of the spawns when that first came out or something. Yeah, yeah that and, was uh, Todd McFarlane and his uh, brainchild. Yeah, yeah. that's huge, man. So they said I should get it, and we found one, and I've held on to that, and I think I have another one. It's not bad. Like I don't even know what I'm talking about. Like I, I awesome. have no... you're like it's around <laughs> here somewhere. I think. 
You know, I'm a, I'm gonna kick myself though if I'm totally sitting on like a hundred thousand dollar comic. You know what I mean? <laughs> I yeah. And so, like, was it the same with like hockey cards and stuff? Like, are you a sports guy? Do you go check out the the Vegas? Uh, okay, so I Nashville, Nashville Predators. Or I love football, man. I'm a oh, okay. I, I you know, and and yes, I'm. I don't live there anymore, and uh, it's been a kind of a depressing several years. But I'm still a Broncos fan. Wow, Denver Broncos. Really? Yeah, I know it's it's painful right now. It's really yeah, it's painful. Awesome. Not feeling very good right now, I guess. Eh? I I don't. I haven't been feeling good since Peyton left. I just, <laughs> it's been a rough well, go. Like every fan, I, man, I you talk to them, they're just figure. like they they cry about Peyton the whole fucking time, man. <laughs> well, think about it. You know, know. after Dude. I'm not going to mention names, but we went from Elway. You right. know, after a run of people, you know, long ago. But then we got into the Elway era, which was amazing, right? And then you go from Elway and then jump to Peyton, and it's like, come on. Like, you, every, it's... <laughs> well, dude, as good as, I, I as, good as he is. Like, yeah. I, I feel bad for all the other quarterbacks that come into debt. I do. I do, because there's talent, you know. But those are some big shoes to fill. Those yeah. two, you know? <laughs> Who's the who's the best right now in the in the league? Do you think? Well, like, I don't even where's know. Mahomes fitting all that? Probably up there. I well, mean, he's got to be top three. He has to be. That's a tough one, man. You're asking good questions. Um, who's um? I like that guy, the new guy at a uh, um um. Hold on, I just saw I just saw it the other day. I'll think of it. Do you, do you um, go play games? Like do you go actually in, and hang out in the, in the stadium? Like how uh, I used to. I, too, right? I haven't done that in a while. Um the last one I went to, I went with friends. My wife and I went with friends to a Titans game. Okay. That was probably over a year ago, I think. Yeah. That was maybe a year and a half ago or something like that. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's about that long now. That was that was a blast. Yeah, but not nearly as much as I'd like to. Yeah, you know. So. Uh, I, I but I love I I just I've always loved love football. I I just it's an awesome sport. My kid plays um, right now, and and he's uh, he's going into his third year of it. And did I, did I some, something on Instagram. He's eighteen, nineteen. So okay, so. Yeah, I do have a 19 year old, and then um, the one I'm speaking of is is 14. Okay, and he is so into it, so into it. Isn't it so yeah. great to watch your kids? Just doesn't matter what the hell it is, like it's so amazing, right? Oh, that's the that's the it, best yeah, yeah best yeah. gift that ever happened to this guy. Yeah, yeah same. same. Kids are like best. Yeah, I'm, yeah. How many you got? Two. I've got a thirteen and an eleven. Yeah, I both, can tell. Both boys. I can tell. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, and they're, they're just like they, they haven't fallen far from the tree. <laughs> yeah, because this is what happens. You're like, oh, your kids, and instantly the smile changes. It goes to, it oh, goes yeah. from, hey, I'm pretty cool and tough yeah. and stuff, and then I'm like, yeah, I'm cheesy oh, as hell man. because I so love good, my kids. <laughs> kids are so good. Like, it, mine's mine's hockey, and the other one's MMA. So like choking people out kickboxing and pancreation nice that's pretty awesome nice that's pretty awesome (laughs) that's perfect that's so good yeah how's your golf game most uh musicians usually have not so bad it's not ls cooper's i can tell you that (laughs) totally right you know what i'm really good at i'm really good at driving the cart yeah drinking beers just hanging yeah i'm not. I'm so that. much better at driving the cart than i am an actual driver yep. matter of fact i played i'm better at playing a course and i haven't done it for a long time but the last time i did i get the best score i'd ever had which wasn't good at all <laughs> like i'm a no golfer man yeah. i played the whole thing with a seven iron oh there, I even <laughs> with well, there you seven. go <laughs> shouldn't shouldn't expect because everything else with a fucking seven iron, went, like, every, that's yeah. the only thing i can make the ball go remotely straight yeah. yeah that's hilarious all right uh brian thank you man for the time i'm going to ask you one last thing it's not really a question it's more of a of a story and for some reason it strikes me you're going to have a good one have have you got a near-death story where you're like holy shit i could have just died there 
<laughs> yeah, I got a couple. Yeah. I, yeah, I have a couple. I have a couple of uh, car <laughs> accidents. Oh, no. Yeah. A couple of car accidents. Once when I was in the daycare, when I was like in elementary, mm. uh, I went to an after school program daycare and I it was my day to sit shotgun. Lucky me. And uh, we uh, were in a small tunnel under a runway under the when it used to be uh, Stapleton Airport in Denver before they built the new airport. Okay. And the highway used to go under parts of the runway. Mm. So uh, 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 another driver cut off the van that we were in, like a big 12 person van with full of a bunch of kids, young kids. And our poor driver, man, he avoided that. But and while he was avoiding that, we were hit in the back from another car and basically sent about 45 miles an hour into the concrete wall of the tunnel. And luckily for me, yeah, I hit the windshield and kind of went through it. Um, but my injuries were incredibly superficial not you know just some cuts and stuff the driver actually broke ribs i've never seen a steering wheel bend so that was one incident another incident was when i was you know a little bit later in my teens it was like 17 and i thought i was gonna <laughs> i thought i was gonna rescue a damsel in distress <laughs> a friend of mine a female friend of mine thought there was kind of a prowler or a peeping tom and so I took off in the middle of the night and I borrowed my dad's Ford LTD, this monster, 72 Ford LTD, right? Yeah. And I went to go save the day. I was going to scare whoever was out there in the backyard, peeping over the fence and stuff. And um, on my way back, it was a rainy night. It was muddy. I'd had kind of rain and mud on my boots and everything. Um, and... Uh, it was a, a road about 45, 50 miles an hour and I'm coming back and it's pretty much straight except there's one turn kind of to the left. And I went to turn in the steering column. Uh, like the gearbox broke the teeth. And the wheel went chick, 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 and started spinning and the car kept going straight. And so I went to hit the brakes and my foot slid off of it because it was wet because I stomped so hard and then hit the brake but there was no room there was a big huge wood telephone pole and luckily it hit just off center <laughs> before it broke it had just turned just slightly enough and it hit slightly off center and tore the whole side of that metal car off pretty much oh, it, 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 yeah it looked like a can of bean dip that I was in and my door flew off and when I turned and the wheel turned, my arm went in and that's about the only thing that held me in the car. So all I remember, the car was spinning like this um, off the side and it went pretty far after it hit that pole just in spins. But I remember it was kind of like seeing the street, seeing the light pole, watching the door fly off. Light pole, street, light pole, light pole. Street. Like in you know, slow like, motion too, right? Like those slow accidents motion, going like, right? whoa, slow, yeah. whoa. like it was the craziest thing ever, right? So yeah, so it just it kept yeah, and then it came to a stop, and um that could have been really bad, but I lived. Oh yeah, like a few inches over, it sounds like, and uh no Brian. The, yeah, the cop said an inch. Wow. Yeah, one inch off, and it would have been a different story. I knew you were yeah. going to have stories, buddy. I knew you were going to have Thank stories. You. Was that good enough? Was all, that good all, one? all the good ones do, bud. All the good ones do. Hey, congrats <laughs> on uh, working with Mick Mars, man. Like, talk about a freaking living legend, man. And the stuff top. that we're hearing from you is, like, top-notch, upper echelon rock, man. I'm fucking excited for you, bud. You know what? Thank you. And, and big, huge thanks to all. There's so many people that support Mick and um, they love what he does. And um, this is, you know, I'll just say this. I know this stuff is coming from his heart and, uh, you know, you read messages and everything, but I can tell you firsthand, he's just doing what he hears in his head and, and, um, and really just, you know, he's, he's got a real clear vision. So, 
Yeah, thank you to everybody that's listening um, and that continues to be supportive. And man, buy the album when it comes out on the 23rd. It's amazing. This thing is one of those you don't skip around. Like, yeah, seriously, yeah. everything is good yeah. on it. You go from front to back. Yeah, uh, he is at Mr. McMars, I believe, on Instagram. You are yep. Brian Gamboa official on yep. Search of yeah. you find on on, uh, t- on Facebook. Do you Twitter? I do. Uh, I I don't Twitter often, but you're there. You know. But I'm there. Okay, hundred <laughs> percent. Awesome. Thanks again, man, Brian. It's nice to meet you, and uh, we'll see you online when we uh, post this stuff.